<laughs> hey guys, happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm here every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central, where we relax and craft and work on a project together. I'm actually not going to be here tomorrow or Friday, though, so next time I will be on will be will be Monday and we're here at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. So we have been working on the hand-stitched project. It's English paper pieced. Uh, you can see I still have some of the papers in the back here. We'll take those out today, but this is by Blair from Wisecraft and uh, the project is available in her book Wisecraft Quilt. So I have links to that and the links to the templates in this post here. And we are going to start stitching this onto the pillow case. So we cut out a piece for the, the front of our pillow case uh, yesterday and I wanna start appliquing this onto the front of it. I am not sure if I wanna quilt it or not yet or just leave it be. Oh, it's a big question mark, I don't know. But I don't have to decide yet because I still have to applique it on and I'm gonna do that by hand. So that will be tonight and then on Monday when we come back, then we're gonna have to, uh, well, we'll probably still be appliquing then, but we're gonna have to start making some decisions on how we want the rest of this to, to look. So that is the plan. Uh, thanks again for joining me, guys. I appreciate seeing you. Uh, Feel free to let me know what you did today and uh, if you worked on this hand stitch project and stuff too in the comments. So thanks again. I'm going to flip you around and let's get going. Yeah, Gretchen, for batting, if I were to do it, I mean, I don't know how other people did it, but if I were to do it, I would, first of all, I'd stitch this guy on and then I'd put batting down and then another piece of fabric probably. And I would just do the front. I would just do quilting and stuff on the front. And then I would treat it, I would trim it and then treat it as like one piece that I sew the, the back pieces to. So that's how I would do batting. All right, so yesterday we cut our piece. This is actually, this is for the front of our pillow. It's actually bigger than it needs to be just because I think it might shrink up a bit or crunch up a bit as we applique. So I will be, uh, um, so that's, so I'll be trimming it down afterwards. I've already folded it in half uh, both ways. So that's kind of marking my center points. I'm gonna align that. I have some center points within this design. So I'm gonna just align these with this. But we have not pressed this yet. So I am going to give it a press now. It'll kind of be our final pressing and then I will pop out the rest of these papers. And hopefully because we've pressed it well, we'll keep our nice edge. And then, then uh, we will stitch it down. Oh, your pillowcase is one that was already made with a zipper. Oh, Gretchen, then I would just applique your, your guy on and be done with it. I wouldn't worry about quilting or anything like that. All right, so headed over to the iron here. So one thing that I think is probably important is I'm using a dry iron, which means I don't have any water, so there's no moisture. If I would, if I would spray this with starch or get some steam on it, then I think, um, first of all, it would wreck my template pieces, but it would also start unfolding all my nice folds that I have here. So I'm just gonna use a dry, a dry iron. Quilting with my quilting group in the road to paradise made, oh! Awesome. Awesome to hear everything you guys are making. Yeah, and for sure, if you wanna share what you're working on, feel free to share it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. Oop, geez, I burnt myself again. Crafters group on, on Facebook. I'm gonna have like burn marks all over my, my hand from this project. I don't know what the deal is. All right, so just pressing this, I can tell it's, already flattening this out quite a bit, which is nice. So let's just rotate it around. Ooh, I do have some funny French knots in, in this one, this uh, square up here. So I, I'll be sure to just press the edges there so I don't squish, squish the French knots. 
Try some left-handed pressing again. I'm so happy with how this turned out though, and I, I think it's gonna look really nice on the purple. But man, I've seen a lot of people who are quilting, who are making it into pillows or something else, but are putting a lot of quilting in it, and I don't know, it's starting to look more fun. Uh, I'm, I'm liking it, but who knows, maybe I'll still just leave it plain um, just for the sake of getting it done. I'm gonna just try and lay this flat on here and see if I can get it one more time. kind of wrinkly in the middle, but I think we're going to be okay. I wanted to make sure that I get the edges really well. So I think I'll, I'll go around and do, do all the edges. I know my husband won't let me play with the iron anymore. I don't know what it is. I burnt myself twice. That one wasn't that bad though. I don't, hopefully that doesn't do anything, but the one on my thumb is like a little scar now. I'm just going around and making sure that I'm getting all the edges because that's important because we're going to take the papers out so there's nothing really going to be supporting these edges anymore. I think I think that's pretty good. Let's head back down over here. So there we are. Okay, so let's flip this around. I think this is flat enough for us to, to work with it. So um, definitely better than what it was. Let's pop out the rest of these papers. So I'm gonna try and be a little careful. Um, oh, I know, maybe I should have some cell by the iron. I know, really, Gretchen, but seriously, this is the, I've, this is the only two times that I've burnt myself since I've put it out here. So I don't know what the deal is. Um, all right, I'm gonna be careful when I take these papers out though, because I don't wanna, I don't wanna ruin these edges that we just pressed. I might, after I take the papers out, I might press it again if it feels like it, it needs it, but I'm hoping I won't have to do that. So I'm, I just, I don't know, picked a place to start. I am just scratching underneath it to kind of release the glue that we, that we put in there earlier. That'll make it easier to pop out. All right, I think we're good. Yeah, we're a hot pad wall ironing. Yeah, there you go, Phyllis. All right, so then popping it out. That's why I punched holes in it earlier so I could just easily, I have a T-pin, but I can easily take um, the hole and pop it out. And oh, I should show you. So this, this T-pin does not have my little contraption on there. Let me get that out. So I have my, my go-to craft kit here. I take this whenever I travel and have crafting, but I have a T-pin in here. Oh gosh, it's all tangled now. Let's see if I can get it out of here. I haven't used it in a while, but I have a T-pin that has a little like lasso on it. There we go. I actually have two of them in there. But here we go. So remember how I was saying that sometimes I fling the pin when I do this? So here we go, now I have a, a lasso on here. So if I fling the pin, it won't get too far. <laughs> uh, it's attached. I know it seems silly, but you'd be surprised at how many times I've flung a T-pin across the room or towards my face. And uh, you know, when I fling it around the room, it's, it's hard to find. <laughs> So this one looks like it could use a little pressing. So I probably will go back and touch up all of this. And I think I'm going to glue base this down when I'm done onto the fabric, which I don't know, maybe isn't a great idea, but I think it's gonna be the plan. Oop, I got a little bit stuck there. So see what I mean? Like once we take the papers out, there's nothing holding these edges anymore. So these are like vulnerable edges at this point. So that's why we want to be pretty careful. Oh, that's a new one for you. Yeah, wait and see. I, I maybe I want to. Maybe today I'll accidentally fling it somewhere, and then you'll be like, "Oh, genius!" <laughs> this is actually my brother's idea put a little uh, lasso on this. If 
You're going to glue it down too, Gretchen? Yeah, I think it's just going to be easier. And you know what? I, I tried a whole pile of different ways when we were doing this splendid sampler and gluing just was easiest and fastest and actually worked the best. Um, it stayed exactly how long I needed it to stay. And um, it didn't, uh, like I'm afraid to use pins because pins will, every time I put a pin in, it's gonna kind of pull my fabric a little bit and uh, it's gonna like distort this a little bit. This one is stuck. I might have, oh, there we go. I might have uh, stitched in some of the edges to that one. It was not playing nice. Oh, this is awfully odd right here. Huh. That was already popping out there. You, Gretchen, you can leave your your papers in. A lot of people do do that. However, it's going to have a different feel than the rest of it. So, um, if you if you took it out of all the rest, I would I would still take them out. I mean, it's going to feel like you got something in in the edge if you don't take the papers out. Um, if you take them out, it'll the whole thing will just feel fabricy and consistent. So, I, I would still probably take them out, but. People do leave them in. On vintage quilts, sometimes you can um, flip the vintage quilt tops over and you'll see papers in a lot of it still. So people did, did leave papers in, at least while they were working on it. It's fun because it, it'll be like newspapers or, or magazines that they're using for their templates. Do you do any crafting in the car traveling? Um, I, Carla, I used to all the time, but now when I'm traveling, I, I just get kind of dizzy. Yeah, I, I get car sick if I'm crafting or doing or reading or anything. I used to read all the time in the car and do all sorts of crafts in the car, but I think it might have something to do with when I was, I mean, you know, in theory, when you get older, your ear balance stuff gets weird. But um, I think it's also, I was in the back seat of the car versus the front seat, um, you know, now. And I think the back seat, I wasn't having things come towards me. Uh, so uh, um, I think that affects me being in the front seat but yeah so nope no go I usually if I'm just going to my parents house then I'll, then I'll usually drive instead because it doesn't seem to affect my husband so he'll work on stuff and whatever and I can just drive um the templates are from wisecraft the wisecraft site so that is uh I, I have a link for the paper templates in in this post Yeah, I mean, you know, you can always make your own templates and everything. The, the sizes are listed in the book, the Wisecraft Quilts book, but it is just so convenient to have the templates ready to go. And you, you can reuse them. That's the nice thing. Like, I can use, even though I've used them already, you know, they're a little bent. They got a little pin pricks, needle pricks on the side. They're still perfectly usable. I can, I can continue to use them um, until they just get really really yucky. So I think they're worth it. Ooh, a little glue stuck there yet. Let's try and refold this one a little. There we go. Oh yes, Bonnie, that's right. I forgot about that. So I'm getting like a drastic haircut or that is the plan. So my hair right now is the longest it's been, I think. And um, the last time I got it cut was the longest it had been at that point. And uh, the hairdresser was like, hey, if you get that, um, if, th if this was just one inch longer, two inches longer, you would have been able to, to donate it. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I hadn't ever thought about that because my hair has never been that long before. So, uh, um, it, it is that long now, and I just don't do anything with it. I just put it up. I don't, you know, 
just so it's out of my way or whatever. And it's just getting to be just too long. Um, so I'm like, hey, it's, it's long enough that I can probably donate it now. So I'm going to, on a Halloween, I have a haircut scheduled. Oh yeah, so Lucy, I think on Monday when I get back, I'll wear it down. Um, just so I can show you guys how long it actually is. And uh, like I said, longest it's ever been for me in my life, I think. And uh, um, then Tuesday, so Monday I'll wear it down. And then Tuesday I have my hair cut and I'm gonna get it cut super duper short, like, like, um, like boy cut short, like that cute boy cut haircut, like, like 11 from uh, um, Stranger Things, but not quite that short, but that sort of shortness. <laughs> so Tuesday on Halloween, when I, I'll, I'll still, I'll still do this on Halloween. We'll just have to stop if some trick-or-treater comes. Uh, my husband can uh, do the trick-or-treaters if it goes that late. I don't think it goes that late, trick-or-treating. But um, it is not a costume on Halloween. My hair will actually be that short. So that is that is the plan. But I'm excited about it. It's been, Bonnie, I think shorter than Pixie. So more, more one length. Like it's not going to be short and then like kind of a little longer on top, I don't think. So kind of like a pixie, but more like that boy cut um, look. So not quite a buzz cut, but not quite a pixie. So that's the plan. We'll see. I'm, a, I'm getting a little bit more nervous now that now that it's coming up. Although, you know, I'm, I'm not all that... I'm not like someone that's like, oh my god, I'm gonna die because I cut two inches off my hair. Like, I, like that's not me. I don't care that much. Um, but still, it's gonna be kind of a lot. <laughs> And I haven't had it short in a, in a long time. I used to have it short a lot. Not that short, I don't think. But um, yeah, so it's probably been years. Probably, probably a decade since I've had it short. So I don't know. We'll see. But that's my, that's my plan for, for Tuesday. I have pictures and everything all ready to go. Uh, to show it. Yeah, I, I think I am gonna Tamara. It's gonna just exactly Bonnie. It'll grow back. So I don't I don't really care all that much um, You know, I mean right now I'm just putting it in a ponytail So how it looks right now is basically how it's gonna look because I always have it pulled back just so it's out of my out of my way But that's the plan. I'm excited. So that's on Tuesday. So Monday I'll wear it down to show you guys and then Tuesday I will uh, it will be different <laughs> Oh, it'll be cold this winter. Yeah, that's true, but it'll be easier to put my coats on because in winter my hair always gets stuck in the, in the coat um, sometimes, so it'll actually be easier, I think. Oh, pictures are great for hairdressers. I have a friend who's uh, like um, does eyelashes and, and hair and stuff, and she says, yes, definitely it's helpful to bring photos in. So that is my plan. All right, all the papers are out. So we have just uh, just thread and fabric here. And again, it is kind of delicate on the edges right now. I think I am gonna go back and press some of it. Some of this is that like thicker, thicker uh, fabric that's a little weirder. Um, I'm going to just double check. I just wanna go around this edge. I'm gonna go from the top here or from the, from the underneath so I can see it. That mini hole in the template. Oh, the cardboards are still in there. Oh yeah, Patricia, you could, you can still get them out if you dig in there. You can, you can get around the edge and and pop a paper out. But yeah, the holes are definitely, definitely do make things a bit easier. All right, I'm just gonna go around all these edges. I think just giving it another little, little press. I think this can't hurt anything. I, I think this would be a good idea. So taking our time here just to go around and hit these up with heat one more time. Uh, next up, I'm gonna glue, I'm gonna put it onto our purple here and then, um, then I'll glue it down. You sewed yours? Oh, did you, Gretchen, you sewed with the papers in? And it was difficult, is that what you're saying? All right. I think this is helping. Let's keep going. Yeah, like up here, they're definitely popping up. That's why I wanna get it, 
get it basted to my purple as quick as I can here. Can poke the needle through the center of the papers to help remove them. Oh, that's true, Lucy. That's a good point. You can always poke poke the papers like with the needle to, to pluck them out. Pluck. That's a good word. Pluck out the papers. All right. Yeah, definitely happy I'm going around this again. Still trying to be delicate because it is vulnerable. Your needle caught the edges of your papers. Oh, oh, so your paper is ripped a little bit. Is that what you're saying? Oh, your needle, oh, when you sewed them together, they, oh yeah, so mine, mine was at a little bit. They're probably still usable, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, they'll get a little bit more damaged every time you use it, probably. But the nice thing is that a lot of these pieces repeat, so, um, once you're done with the middle pieces, you can reuse some of those for the outside pieces. So even if you ruin a couple, you'll probably have enough to do another one. Or you can always, if you do have some good ones, just trace it onto like a postcard and make some new templates from some thicker paper based on the old templates. So I would, I'd at least keep, keep some if you wanted to make more templates. All right, I think we have gone around there. Okay, let's let's try and center it on here. So you can see again, I have, I've already, I folded in half a couple times. So I do have these these points, uh, and that's going to be my center area. So I just want to flip this to. Um, I wanted the flower upright. So in in my head, this is the top, and this is the bottom. So we do have these couple of seams that are centered. I'm gonna line up these seams with uh, my folds here as best I can. And then I'm just gonna glue this down, I think. I still have my little sew line marker, or not marker, my sew line uh, glue stick, little glue stick here. And the important thing when gluing this down, let's try and center it finish centering it first. All right, we're looking good up there. The nice thing is if I tilt this a little bit, I, I can, I'm can i still gonna cut it down because this is a bigger piece. Now, what if you put batting in between before you applique? Oh, well, you could do something like that. I mean, when I meant, when I said quilting, that wasn't, I wasn't intending to only quilt this piece, but Gretchen, that would be an interesting idea if you, if you cut a piece of batting into this shape, um, it would be, you'd have like a trapunto effect. So that's where this whole piece would be raised, but everything else would look not raised. That would be a pretty inter interesting experiment. Um, if you were to do that, I would cut it maybe just shy of this shape, and then you would put it, you would lay it underneath here, and then you'd probably pin it um, more and then stitch it down. But that would make this whole the whole this piece look raised against the background. That'd be pretty interesting. Um, I've not done that before. Uh, that is actually a technique that Blair uses in her Wisecraft Quilts book to raise up just little pieces like that. So it'd be fun to try. Um, when I was thinking of quilting, I was thinking of the whole entire front as one piece I would quilt. Like I would sew over the top of this and stuff. Um, and in that case, I would put one big piece of batting behind here, plus maybe another lining um, fabric. But all right, I think I have this all lined up pretty well along my, um, you know, seams here. So I'm going to glue it down. I'm going to kind of do it um, one side the other. It is laying pretty flat, flatter than I thought it was going to. But I think I'm going to start gluing you know, this area here, and then I'll probably jump to this area just to kind of keep it flat. And then maybe, you know, the top and the bottom leave to keep that flat, and then I'll go around these edges. But I'm only going to, um, oh, Gretchen, you could probably hand quilt it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm only going to glue 
on the seam allowances. Because if I put any glue on the inside, you're gonna be able to tell that that's tacked down. Like you're gonna have like this little um, glue dot here really. And um, needle turn applique, like this applique should feel a little bit like it's floating off the surface. I mean, unless I'm quilting all over the top, but it, it shouldn't feel like it's tacked down by anything like glue. And if we just put it on the seam allowance, only the seam allowance will be glued down and then the rest, the top, will be allowed to float a little bit still. So I'm only gonna put it on the seam allowance and I'm also going to try and avoid my little dog ears if they're in the way on the edge because when I stitch, I'm gonna tuck these under a little bit more um, so, they're, so they don't show. So I'm going to only do seam allowance and stay away from the dog ears, like right on the dog ears. So let's let's just get going. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start, like I said, with these squares here, then do the other side so I can lay it flat and then top and bottom same way. And then I'll, then I'll go around and hit every seam allowance. So, okay, let's sit down and ugh, do this. Actually, you know what I might stand? I can see my, I can see my lines a little bit better. So, all right, I'm just going to hit that with some glue. See how that goes as a start. So again, this technique worked better for me than the other applique techniques when I was working on um, needle turn applique for the Splendid Sampler. I'm going to go up on this one a little bit. You can tack down the center. You can tack down the center wherever you want. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not, no, uh, Patricia, I'm not going to tack down the center because you would be able to see, you would be able to see that it's attached to the back just in that spot and I want it to float. So I'm only attaching it on the seam allowances. So I, I would not tack down on the center unless you were planning on like washing this immediately. Like if I wash this, then all this glue will go away. So it won't matter where I tack it down. But I'm I'm only doing it on the seam allowance, and I'm I'm hoping it's going to be enough glue, and that it's going to hold long enough if I just go all the way along the edge and don't get anywhere else. All right, so I kind of have this side going. I'm going to jump over to this side. Nope, I'm not going to put it in a quilt hoop. I am just going to, I'm not going to put it in anything. I'm just going to hold it and then like, uh, like I'm needle turn appliquing down, down the edge. That's all. Let's see if I can get all this at once before it dries. All right, and the reason I wanted to do that side is so I could just kind of flatten this across. I think that worked okay. Press these down. Oh, nope, I'm not gonna put a zipper in mine. I'm gonna do that envelope back um, where you know I have the one front and then I have the two rectangles on the back that overlap, and then I can pull those rectangles open to stuff the pillow in. So that's, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm not enclosing the whole thing. It's going to be that envelope back. So nothing will, maybe I'll put a button there to keep it shut, but I'm thinking I'll just overlap it enough that it will never really poof out enough um, to separate. So that's, that's my plan. All right, now I'm going to do the top and the bottom. Not sure if I'm getting any glue on. Yeah. All right, again, I'm gonna just kind of go from the center, kind of make sure it's flat. Not really stretching it, I'm just kind of making sure it's flat. That's the best way to close the pillow in your mind, just with that envelope back. Yeah, you know, it's just easy. It's so easy and I think it's cute and it does the job and that's all it needs to do, right? Those three things. Easy, cute, does the job. <laughs> uh.
That'd be a good motto. Easy, it's easy, it's cute, and it does the job. I do think I'm gonna have to add more fabric to my back though, because I, I wanna do it in that, just that piece that I cross cut of this purple. And I'm gonna need more fabric for that overlap. So I'm gonna use my scrap fabric to just extend my rectangle a little bit and it'll be like a decorative little back to it. All right, so I have, I have the little sides glued and I just did it that way so I could kind of anchor anchor it down a little bit so it's flat. And now I'm gonna go in and glue the rest and kind of still lay it flat as I go. So let's let's see what's not glued down here. All right, so that's, see, that's, that's pretty well attached. That's attached enough for us to do the needle turn applique and that's all it needs to be. And if we're, if we're doing the needle turn and by the time we've gone all the way around, it starts loosening up here, I'll just go back and, and add some more glue. I don't think it's gonna be the end of the world, I think. I think that's gonna work just fine. So we're, we're almost attached. We are definitely gonna get to appliqueing tonight yet, which makes me happy. Get these little flanges on. I think this guy is kinda glued down already. That's glued down enough. All right, I think that's the only one I did. Let's go up here. And you can store just the pillow cover and replace it. Exactly. So Patricia, with that envelope, I mean, I can I can easily get to the pillow. Um, I can easily make a new pillowcase if I need to. I can easily take it off and wash it if I need to. So envelope is a good way to do it, I think. Oops. There we go. More glue. And all this glue will wash out if I ever do wash this. I, don't, I probably won't wash this, um, you know, to start out with. I think it's fine. But the nice thing is with just going on the outside and on these seam allowances, whether it's washed or not, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look the same. Versus if I started gluing on the inside here, you'd, you'd see all that glue. You'd see everywhere that I put glue down. Okay, I think we, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do over here yet. Whoever invented the glue pen sure made our lives better. Yeah, Sa Sandra, or Sandra, I, I haven't, um, it wasn't until the Splendid Sampler that I'm like, okay, fine, I'll try this whole glue thing. Because the idea of using glue on the fabric, I was just like, eh, that doesn't seem, that doesn't seem like a pure way to, like, I don't know, dig into the fabric or something. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking, but the idea of, putting glue on it just, I don't know, wasn't working for me, but then I tried it. I'm like, okay, I'm doing this splendid sampler for the sake of trying things and testing things out. We'll, we'll try the glue. And it just worked like so well that, you know, it was completely worth it. And it's washable. It's in theory washable and non-toxic. So, um, and it's not like I'm making you know, I'm doing this for fun. I'm not doing this to make some heirloom piece that's gonna be in a museum or some crazy thing like that, you know? I'm just, just stitching for fun. So if it only lasts, you know, if it lasts 10 years, then that's perfectly fine. If it starts to, you know, get beat up after, after that, I'm not gonna panic. All right, so we are pretty much glued down here. It's still kind of vulnerable at this state. You know, I don't wanna putz with it too much because this glue will pop up. So I'm gonna start stitching right away and I'm gonna stitch this exactly how we've been doing um, the needle turn applique on the I Love Home quilt. I'm just gonna go around the edge and do that little, um, needle turn where stitch where we kind of tack it down and that's that's it 
It's like pie crust, you know the Pillsbury kind is awesome, and the pie crust from scratch is hard. There you go. <laughs> All right, so I got, uh, I got um, Zeb here. Let's just grab my needle. Ugh, look, he looks so cute with this project. All right, so I'm gonna switch colors. I was using that light color, and in theory, when you applique, you use a color that kind of matches the top. But this, this gray kind of matches, it kind of is a nice medium between everything. I think it's gonna blend better. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this light gray that I have. And I'm still using just that 50 weight Aurifil. That's, it's what I got and it seems to be working just fine. So, whoops. Let's use that. Again, though, this is a big, a big piece for me. You know, this is 18 inches. It's, it's bigger than what I'm, what I'm used to. So we'll see how this needle turn goes and maybe it will be pretty clumsy with the glue. I, I have no idea. I haven't needle turned anything this large before, but Hey, what just popped in my head was, you know, I was talking about how it'd be fun to do a Hawaiian quilt where you have the huge pieces of intricate applique. This mimics that a little bit. So if this goes smoothly, then, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll be picking up the um, Hawaiian quilt stuff soon. I'm trying to figure out where I should start. I think I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna start in the middle of a block instead of like a corner because I want to be able to tuck in all the edges and all the things that are at all these points. So I think a neutral area would just be somewhere in the middle. So I think, um, well, actually I'm going to start over here. So when you're like a, a thing with, um, oh, nope, I'm doing this all by hand. Oh yeah, I probably, I wouldn't use glue with the Hawaiian. I would do that all needle turn. That's true. So this is a little bit different. But in theory, it would still be basted down. So it would just be basted down with thread uh, instead. The pin cushion's still available. Sue, they, she, the pin cushions, she, uh, Barbara, it's, oh gosh, it's Barbara, right? Um, it's Fish Museum and Circus. I think I have a link to it actually. Uh, but she releases them every couple of weeks and uh, they get sold out within seconds. And I'm, I'm pretty literal in that, in that seconds. And so you have to get on our newsletter so you know exactly the date and time that they come out. But then if you're like on the button when they come out and you keep refreshing your page. Oh, Deborah, yeah, Deborah, it's Deborah from Fish Museum and Circus. Um, but if you're right there at the moment that they come out, then yes, they are still available. <laughs> All right, so I'm starting in the middle here. This is actually the bottom right hand corner. And uh, in artwork and stuff, yes, and don't use PayPal because you'll, you'll lose time and someone will snag it underneath you. So you have to be there right, you have to be refreshing your browser so it's up to date the moment that she posts it. And then once you see something, don't decide, just know beforehand based on her newsletter which one you want and when you see it or anything close to it you click it and when then a menu will pop up that says paypal or credit card click that credit card and then click submit on the other page you got to do it that fast if you click paypal you'll have to log in and all this other stuff and you'll someone will buy it underneath you <laughs> so that is the trick uh to getting it Oh yeah, I could do this on the sewing machine. I don't have any stitches that will really hide hide the stitch. And I've been kind of liking this needle turn applique lately. I, I find it like super duper relaxing. So I'm gonna just go around and stitch this by hand. I think it'll be a little bit more invisible and it's just super enjoyable. I know if I did this on my machine, um, the stitches would be super duper visible and it would look machine done. And at this point, you know, we did the whole rest of this thing by hand. I want to, um, I want to finish the whole thing by hand. Yeah, I could do a small zigzag, but again, it wouldn't have that. I wouldn't have that hand. I'm following through on the hand done, I guess is what I'm saying, even though ultimately I'll be doing the pillow. 
um, sewing the pillow by machine. But this, I don't know, if I don't end up quilting this or anything, I think I'm gonna be happy with this this hand, hand stitched look. So I'm stitching this exactly like the needle turn, except for it's already kind of turned. I'm still gonna put that double stitch in um, this corner here. So we're gonna take some time and just hand stitch this whole thing. Oh, you did yours, Irene, by hand and it didn't take you long? Oh, <laughs> thanks, Patricia. Yeah, I just like the look of it. Everything kind of floats um, when you do needle turn, and I like that. And like I said, we did the whole rest of this thing by hand. Might as well keep doing it. Are you tempted to add any embroidery to any of the pieces before you finish the pillow? Not really. I'm, I'm leaving this. I mean, I do actually have a little bit of embroidery in this scrap here. Um, I'm... I'm okay with not having embroidery for embellishments or anything. I'm trying to figure out how to hold this so I don't pop up all the glue. I need to tuck under this corner a little bit here. One of these dog ears, so I'm just going to tuck it under just a hair with my needle. There we go. Um, so, I mean embroidery would be actually really cute. You could echo, do like echo stitching where you just go around around the shape a few times with embroidery. That would be pretty dang cute. Um, oh man, don't give me, don't give me any more ideas. I want this, I want to finish. <laughs> I think um, this one will stick to, to no embroidery. We'll be doing embroidery soon enough with, with block four. Got a little knot in here already. There we go. With straight edges and already turned under. Yeah, it'll go fast. I'm, I'm not worried. And you know what? It's so relaxing, actually. Especially when you don't have to turn anything. It's already turned for you. Although this big piece is going to be a little conundrum for me. I'm not used to a piece this big holding it. So that'll be, that'll be the new challenge. How do I hold the fabric when I'm needle turning a larger, larger piece like this? But I'm starting in this bottom right hand corner because in in like art land or design land, graphic design land, that's the least looked at corner. So if I start and stop in that corner, my start and stop points, like if it's a little bigger hole or bigger knot, in theory it'll be less noticeable. So that's kind of why I'm starting this corner. Oh, you love how I did the embroidery and needle turn on the other phone blocks. Oh, thanks, Carla. I'm excited about those. Yeah, that was that was an experiment. I wanted to try doing that needle turn um, embroidery combo since the Splendid Sampler. And I have this book of just beautiful needle turn and um, hand embroidery combo stuff. Um, and I wanted to give that a try. So that's kind of what that the Isle of Home is like providing for me. I have to try something new or every every craft I work on has some experiment in really for me even if it's a little experiment um like a little thing that I want to try and that was definitely part of my Isle of Home quilt was let's try and do needle turn and embroidery together. All right, so here I'm, I'm at the corner point. We got all these little fuzzles here, little stray threads. I'm gonna just tuck all those under. All the little weird folds and edges will, will get tucked under at this point. I think I'm gonna actually put one more stitch in before I get that far. I would put pins in the middle areas, then I could hold more fabric. So in the middle areas of all these, so I was afraid that I would um, I was afraid that doing that would kind of pucker, pucker things, but yeah, I suppose if I put pins like in the middle, I don't want to put the pins here because when I grab, I'll just stab myself. You want to try zippers? Oh, Gretchen, did you? Okay, so I, I shared about those, didn't I? Yeah, in the, in the crafters group. I should share about those again, but the, 
the uh, So Sweetness, so Sarah from So Sweetness has those new uh, minikin um, bags, minikins is what she named them. So she's releasing, like for a limited time, I think they're super cheap compared to what they are going to be. And it's 12 different adorable, like small bags. So small, in theory, quicker bags to make, like, you know, catch-all bags and, you know, bags for, like, good travel bags and for carrying all your little knickknacks and stuff. But gosh, they all look cute, don't they? They all look um, like they'd be fun to make. All right, I will throw a pin in the middle here, Rosalie. I think you, it would be just, it would make me happy to hold that. And you know what? Maybe I'll, so I don't stab myself, I'll throw one of these quilting pins in. How about that? I think I have some smaller ones hiding in here, but maybe not. Maybe they're all big. Oh, here's a small one. Yeah, we'll just throw one of those in. So I typically use these pins for basting a quilt. I think I'm gonna just, this is here for security's sake. If all of this comes apart, I will still know where it all goes because of this pin in the middle. I think, I think that will do it for me. It's actually holding up pretty well as I stitch here. But look how pretty it is stitched down. I don't know, there's something about needle turn that I just really like. Oh, you just watched her video of the salvage bake. Oh yeah, so she, she does a Thursday Facebook Live video now. Um, where she shows how to do stuff. Oh, we started making two today. Oh, that's awesome, Lucy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and get those So Sweetness bags too. They are just so adorable and it's just the perfect size for anything and perfect for Christmas gifts. I don't know. They're pretty neat. Like you just do Christmas gifts and fill them with like cute lotions for somebody or like you know, thread for someone else, depending on, on who it is. But everyone can use, like, a nice travel bag, you know? Debbie, they're on the So Sweetness page. So if you are in Facebook and you just type in So, like, S-E-W, Sweetness, um, her logo is, like, a little, like, a blue circle with some pink and stuff in. Um, if you see that, then that's the right page. That's her page, and that's where she has all the, Sarah has all the info on her her minikins bag and the salvage bag. All right, getting this corner twice again. I think it just holds the corner as well. Doesn't look like I have any dog ears to tuck in here. If you have a zipper foot and watch the video. Oh yeah, zippers are no big deal. And the zipper is just allows space to sew the, the bulk of the zipper. Oh, I don't have a tutorial on zippers, but that would be a fun thing to do. Um, I'm planning on doing more sewing videos and and uh, just like quick, real quick how-to videos, not, not like these long, you know, hour-long live things. So I'll put that on my list. You're gonna be a zipper for Halloween. <laughs> I scare you, oh, funny. My zipper. <laughs> that sounds cute. This is so nice that these are already turned under. It just makes this super relaxing. Yeah, they'll be on YouTube, Rosalie. All, all my, um, the new little short vids that I want to do, those will all be YouTube videos. I might upload them here too, but the main the the main idea will be that they're on YouTube. Then I'm gonna drop my needle. All right. So we're you know this is gonna take a while yet, but it is relaxing, and I do love this look. So this you know the needle turn look is the same look as all our little whip stitches and. I just like it. It makes me happy. I like knowing that I hand hand sewed it. 
So for me, this was the way to go. But yeah, if I machine sewed this on, it would be way faster, I'm thinking. But here I can tuck in the edges all nice and... I don't know, I like it. Okay, you have to keep grabbing from the top here. You know, I am handling it quite a bit, so I am going to have to keep an eye on making sure things are staying glued down. A good how-to would be how to use your home printer to enlarge embroidery pattern. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. We could do that. For sure. Like where the things are in the print monitor, how to enlarge it and stuff too. Yeah. Oh, Patricia, that's nice. A happy pillow. I got a little knot in here again. Thread's twisting up kind of a little bit. I probably took a little bit more thread than I should have. But that's okay. Yeah, the nice thing about um, Sarah from So Sweetness, her new patterns that she's putting out, they come with with videos as a as a bonus, which is cool. Oh, your car was named Toodles. I'm already funny. Oh, use the wax for for the um, thread. Let's see, did I have, I did have some wax in here. Let's give that a try. So I do have some old wax in here. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna just run it through here. In theory, this should help it not twist up as much and kind of give it some body. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Oops, slid out. I don't know. See if that does anything. I've heard some people who heat it up a little bit too first, I don't know. Or hold, hold their thread by their iron a little bit. But that freaks me out a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go like this. See if that little bit of wax does something. You applicate a white circle but didn't match the whites used. Oh, an anchor color. Oh, I'm sure it looks nice. Still Gretchen. All right, at this little inner point here. Come on here. Trying to grab the back purple. All right, well, kind of a goofy stitch. All right, well, we got one piece completely stitched down. I don't know, Nancy. Some people have told me to, to use it with embroidery floss before, but I have never used wax on embroidery floss. In my head, I feel like it would give it a different kind of look to it. I should give that a try sometime just to see what happens. But yeah, some people put on their embroidery floss. I've heard that you run the wax over and then hold it near your iron because then it kind of melts the wax. But I have not done that either. So I don't, I don't know what that would be like. I think it would completely change things, but you know, maybe for the better. All right, cruising up this side. I'm 
get that point. Yeah, there's something super relaxing about doing this by hand, but also that it's already all turned under <laughs> makes it so easy. So I am actively trying to keep my back fabric, the purple fabric, flat while I do this, because it's going to want to, like if I allow it, I could just really bunch it up underneath my, my piece, and I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that things stay flat here. So I'm just always thinking about that and adjusting how I'm holding it if I need to. But it's getting stitched down. It's it's working. Fuddle. So again, just as a reminder, I'm not going to be back here till till Monday. Oh yeah, Gretchen, exactly. Um, I could have mom's cooking. We're having pizza. Pizza in a pizza oven. Yep, nope, no fuzzles sticking out. I think those are just fuzzles hanging out somewhere else. I don't know. Hanging out from the table that I picked up. Yep, so tomorrow's pizza. And Friday will probably be Friday night fish fry. It is Wisconsin, after all. Friday night fish. Okay, I'm gonna get that point one more time, but I'm just gonna rotate it here. Oops. So we'll go for a few more minutes yet. I wanna maybe get to like here. I'll probably stop in the middle. Um, of a row just because that's the easiest place just right in the middle there's no corners or points to deal with there but I think I want to get to that blue piece and then we'll we'll stop for the night and I will just let this sit here till Monday I don't see any reason why the glue should pop up on its own you you hired people to make wood fire pizzas for your daughter's wedding ah oh, that sounds awesome that's a fantastic idea for a wedding. How cool. That sounds amazing. But yeah, so we'll be doing that. It's nice, especially this time of year, because, um, you know, you're harvesting all the garden stuff, so you can just throw whatever garden stuff you want on the pizza, and it's pretty much guaranteed to be amazing. Fresh garden pizzas. Gotta drive five hours first, but after that, that's fine. They have portable ones? Oh man, Gretchen, that's cool. Portable wood fire pizza ovens. Dang. It's a business right there. Just walk around town with one of those things. We have some good pizza places in town here. All right, get this little center area. I don't think I'm gonna go around it twice since it is all tucked under for me already. I think we're gonna be okay. Yeah, so, dang, I want to keep going, but it's that time again, so it's probably a good time to stop. I'm going to get to the middle area here. We'll do one more stitch. So on Monday, it'll be really easy to pick up right away, because we'll just keep stitching where we left off. Um, I'm going to just throw my pin in the, not my pin, the needle in the edge there. 
And there we go. So we have this little quadrant almost stitched down. I mean, almost a couple more inches. But look how sweet it is with the needle turn. I don't know. There's something special about hand applique. Here it is a little bit closer here. It just kind of floats off the top. You can see all the little edges. I just think it's pretty. So that's the plan. Um, we'll continue that for, um, well, until we get it done, I guess. So Monday, probably all day, we'll work on it. Actually, maybe Monday through, um, through the rest of the week, we might do it. But the pillow part, I don't think will take that long. Although I do want to do some improv piecing with the, um, with the back a little bit. Oh, it'll just get done when it gets done, but we're farther. <laughs> All right, I'm going to flip you guys around and we'll call it an evening tonight. Hello there. So here we are. Little bottom piece is stitched on, but it's going to be so cute. I'm excited for it. Yay, I love that purple. <laughs> uh, this will look nice on the couch, I think. Uh, so awesome. I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and it'll stay here on Facebook as well. And uh, yeah, I will catch you guys on Monday. I'll have to wear my hair down on Monday so you can see how long it is, because Tuesday it's going away. But it's not going to look any different because it'll just look like this. <laughs> like how I have it every night here. So eh, we'll see. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, thanks, Bonnie. I appreciate it. Um, I will catch you guys on Monday, so have a great rest of your week, and, and have a great weekend. I will see you later. I might post here and there on fa Facebook and Instagram so over the weekend, and I'll get to see Chad the cat. <laughs> so you'll probably see pictures of him. Uh, so if you're following my Instagram, the stories on Instagram, you might, you might see Chad over there. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great evening. Good night.